Okay, so uh, now we'll talk about the auditory system is responsible for hearing or audition. Peripheral organs are your ears. And ear has three parts, external or outer ear, middle ear, and inner or internal ear. And external ear uh, has these structures, pinna, that you can see from outside, External acoustic meatus, it is a canal. Meatus means canal. So, external acoustic meatus or outer ear canal that you can see just the end part, right? That the canal going in into the uh, head. And then tympanic membrane or ear drum, same thing. Common people uh, say ear drum, but in anatomy we say tympanic membrane okay so those three structures are in the external ear middle ear is a cavity in the inside the temporal bone you know temporal bone So inside the temporal bone, you have a cavity that is called the middle ear. So middle ear is a cavity. And inside that middle ear cavity, you have three ossicles or tiny bones. Ossicles are very small bones. Okay. As well as, it's not listed here, you have two tiny muscles. So these muscles, tiny muscles, uh, hold the tiny bones ossicles in right place so they will not move too much okay uh, so in the middle ear you have three ossicles and two muscles inner ear or internal ear is the most important part because the cochlea is located inside the inner ear this is the most important structure in the ear because you have the hair cells inside the cochlea okay hair cells hair cells are the sound receptor cells sound receptor cells okay so that's why uh, cochlea is the most important structure in the ear for the processing of sound because the receptors are there. Okay? Uh, if the receptors are not activated, the signal action potential or electrical signal will not be produced. The signal will not move towards the brain. Okay? So, damage of the cochlea will uh, you know, cause deafness okay loss of hearing and you know probably you have heard artificial cochlea uh, uh, can work uh, but will not be able to work like exactly you know um, uh, re uh, like real cochlea but it, it uh, you know uh, does some basic functions improve the sound perception okay so cochlea is very important okay because cochlea has the hair cells and hair cells are the receptor cells okay now uh, also in the inner ear you have three tubules or tube like structures those are called the semi circular canals Okay, so three semicircular canals, as well as you have another structure that is called vestibule. So you have a cochlea, you have three semicircular canals or tubules, and one vestibule. Now you already know the function of the cochlea processing of sound. 
sound signal. Now, semicircular canals and vestibule, these are not responsible for sound processing, but these are responsible for the equilibrium balance. Equilibrium or balance. Or body position. Body position. All these are you know similar. Equilibrium or maintaining the balance or body position. So not related to sound. So if you know uh, any damage occurs in the semicircular canal or vestibule, the person will lost the uh, ability to maintain the balance of the body or body position signal uh, will not go to the brain so the person will not be able to maintain the balance and uh, you know sometimes infection if infection occurs in uh, these structures uh, too much fluid accumulate then that can cause vertigo okay. the person uh, gets that that clinical you know uh, uh, condition or disorder that is known as uh, vertigo probably you have heard about this you know uh, this clinical condition okay the person feels like you know uh, dizzy and uh, a lost of feeling of uh, balance anyway so those are the structures inside the ear and uh, their important functions okay so you got a, uh, an idea about the ear so now let's see those structures and pictures okay so uh, in external ear you see the pinna and the edge edge of the pinna this fold is called the helix so this folding at the edge of the pinna this is pinna is called the helix okay and the bottom of the pinna this part where you put the earring that is the lobule okay it's a fat inside lot of fat you see okay uh, so that part you can see from outside and this is the outer ear canal or external acoustic meatus so the uh, ear uh, pinna is like a funnel so it captures the sound waves that arrives uh, in the ear so it is like a funnel so it captures and then sends the sound waves into the uh, or pours the sound waves into the external acoustic meatus okay and then the sound waves will hit the ear drum or tympanic membrane so the sound is actually many waves sound is actually waves so many waves like go one after another and hit the tympanic membrane one after another very fast right so uh, if the sound frequency how many waves you have in one second that is the frequency okay if in one second you have like 10,000 waves just think that how big number 10,000 in one second okay so if in one second uh, 10,000 waves enter into the air that means 10,000 waves mean one kilo hertz kilohertz kilo means 1000 right so 1000 hertz hertz is the unit so um, if 5000 waves in 
5000 waves in one second that is 5 kilohertz right so that many you know uh, waves hit the tympanic membrane which is the eardrum and the eardrum shakes at that frequency so when the eardrum shakes what happens you see this is the middle ear here cavity inside the tympanic bone uh, cavity inside the temporal bone okay so three ossicles are malleus incus and steps so these are the three ossicles and they are attached to each other you see here here they are attached to each other so first one is the malleus middle one is the incus and the last one is the steps so you see the malleus is attached to the other side of the tympanic membrane so sound waves hit uh, comes from outside and hit here and shakes the tympanic membrane okay and in the other side of the tympanic membrane you have the malleus attached so malleus will also shake at the same rate and when the malleus will shake since the other end of malleus is attached to the incus incus will sh shake and also the steps will vibrate or shake so these three ossicles they are attached to each other and act as liver and you know uh, that uh, uh, liver uh, amplifies the sound a anything you know uh, the uh, liver uh, you know when uh, you see the construction of you know big building or road you see the cranes uh, the cranes uh, the parts of the cranes are uh, attached to each other like the ossicles are attached to each other inside the middle ear and they uh, can you know lift heavy weight uh, because uh, you know the liver uh, like helps to amplify the function okay uh, so uh, that is uh, the function of those three ossicles function of those three ossicles okay so these ossicles uh, work as lever liver and uh, amplifies the sound many times sound pressure not the frequency sound pressure or intensity same thing so <coughs> uh, if the sound is 10 kilohertz that means 10,000 times that uh, frequency will not change will remain same but the pressure of sound will be amplified many times and in the uh, area where the steps is attached that is called the oval window you see oval shaped right not completely round it's like oval and that's why it is called oval window it is a membrane too so when these three ossicles shake shake uh, that amplifies the sound pressure and uh, that will also shake the oval window okay so just know that and now we'll see the inner ear this is the cochlea it is a snail shaped bony fluid filled structure so it is a coiled snail shaped bony fluid filled structure in the inner ear so if you break this shell inside the cochlea you will find the fluid okay 
and this is the vestibule this part and semicircular canals you remember i mentioned in last slide so this one is for sound because the hair cells are inside this Hair cells are located inside the cochlea, and uh, the vestibule and semicircular canals are partially fluid with, uh, filled with fluid. And when you tilt your head, the fluid moves inside them, and that fluid movement can give uh, the information which way you are moving your head. It is like you know, uh, if this is a tube, if you take a tube, and you know. Uh, partially fill not completely like partially fill with water or fluid now if you move this side down the fluid will or water will move to this side right if you move this side down the fluid will move to this side and you have the sensors here in the wall of those semicircular canals so they can detect which way the motion of the fluid so that's a, a very simple mechanism and that will that signal will go to the brain okay to tell the brain which way your body or head is tilting and then brain will take care of that to maintain the balance okay so let's see uh, here so this is the middle ear here <clears throat> and this is the malleus the first ossicle this is the incus and this is the steps okay and they are attached to each other and first one malleus is also attached to the tympanic membrane or eardrum and the last one the steps i already mentioned is attached to the oval window here okay so when the tympanic membrane shakes the ossicles shake okay that amplifies the sound pressure why you need to amplify the pressure by the ossicles why you need these ossicles the sound wave that travels in the air uh, can easily displace or move the air make sense to move the air it is you don't need a lot of pressure okay so sound waves can move the air and create waves in the air but inside the cochlea you remember i said you have fluid so cochlea is filled with fluid so when that you know uh, uh, the uh, waves will arrive here to move the fluid you need much more pressure than the air so now the function is moving the fluid and create waves in the fluid so how the uh, waves in the air can create waves in the fluid you cannot do that unless the pressure is amplified because to displace the fluid or move the fluid you need more pressure right so that's why you have those ossicles there is a clinical condition that is called auto sclerosis uh, what happens in autosclerosis uh, these joints between the ossicles get hard flexibility of the joint is lost that can occur due to accumulation of fat as well as calcium That can form like you know uh, bone like tissue here heart tissue and that will uh, you know decrease the flexibility of these joints and if that happens then the ossicles will not be able to move enough uh, the amplification of sound pressure will not occur so if sound is not amplified then that will not be able to move the fluid enough right so the person will not be able to here that is one reason of loss of hearing okay due to loss of the movement of the ossicles okay uh, another clinical condition that is called a tight 
it is medial uh, infection of the middle ear infection of middle ear so fluid can accumulate here inside and can also reduce the movement of the ossicles okay now uh, so this is the cochlear vestibule semicircular canals okay and you see from this is important from uh, the cochlea the nerve that gets out to take the signal to the brain towards the brain that is the cochlear nerve makes sense attached to the cochlea and this is for sound right and the nerves come from the vestibule and semicircular canal they join to form the vestibular nerve because it is attached this part is the vestibule okay and now you can tell that vestibular nerve is not for sound but for the signal of body position that signal your bra brain receives from this uh, this vestibular nerve okay so cochlea is for hearing and vestibular nerve is for body or head position and both joined together or bundled together that is the auditory nerve auditory nerve cranial nerve number eight cranial nerve number eight so auditory nerve has vestibular nerve as well as cochlear nerve and they have totally different functions right uh, that's why auditory nerve is also called vestibulo cochlear nerve together vestibulo cochlear vestibulo cochlear nerve same thing okay it has vestibular and cochlear nerves both <clears throat> now uh, you see from the middle ear a tube goes to the nasopharynx naso pharynx the uppermost part of the pharynx so from the middle ear a tube goes to the nasopharynx and this tube actually maintains helps to maintain the pressure inside the ear if the air pressure inside the ear increases then some air will go to the pharynx to reduce the pressure makes sense so this is a like passes that will let some air get out so this is very important uh, if inside the air the pressure air pressure increases that will reduce the pressure now having this is very helpful now you understand but it could be problematic too in infants young uh, kids the head is small right and this is the middle ear and this is the nasopharynx so the head is small in you know a small child so the length of the tube is short makes sense the distance between ear and pharynx is short and also uh, vertically they are close to each other so it's like you know uh, like more horizontally placed now when you get you know your body grows what happens the distance increases as well as the ear goes more away vertically from the uh, uh, nose so this is the middle ear up ear is above and this is the nasopharynx okay in adult 
and this is child small child so now you see uh, in a small child from the nose the fluid can easily get into the middle layer because the tube is short and horizontal so the fluid from the nose or nasopharynx can easily go to the ear and can cause ear infection infection in the ear that's why you know some small kids suffer from ear infection a lot and very frequently now when uh, your head grows then the tube gets longer as well as the vertical distance uh, increases right so the tube gets more like you know oblique so the fluid from the nose or nasopharynx cannot easily go to the ear so that's why you, uh, the adults get uh, less ear infection or don't get ear infection like the kids or small children okay so i said that uh, inside the middle ear cavity you have three ossicles malleus incus steps and i also mentioned at the very beginning in first slide that there are two tiny muscles too these are two tiny muscles tensor tympani is the larger one and stepadius the smaller one but both are tiny and you see they are attached to the ossicles and they hold the ossicles in right location inside the middle ear because it is a cavity and also uh, you know when the ossicles shake or vibrate in very high frequency uh, uh, they uh, control the movement so they will let the ossicles move which is very important because ossicles must move to amplify the sound but they won't let the ossicles move too much if too much sudden movement occur then the ossicles may get you know detached from each other because these joints are not very strong joints right so like very loud sound so like you know if something explodes next to you it's that, that very strong sound will uh, try to move the ossicles a lot sudden sudden movement of the ossicles but because of these tiny muscles the ossicles will not be able to you know displace a lot and that is very important if they get displaced and detached from each other then you will lose the ability to hear hearing loss will occur right so that is a protection so uh, now if you see inside the cochlea so this is the cochlea you know it is a coiled structure and here you have the oval window and this is the steps then malleus and incus and this is the tympanic membrane okay so tympanic membrane three ossicles are here and this is the cochlea now if i just take the cochlea out and put in a petri dish and you know in the fluid keep it alive and uh, since it is coiled like you know a coiled um, uh, tongue i can make it straight just pull, hold here and pull it to make it straight so let's make it straight so it looks like a tongue like this and if i see inside the cochlea i'll see two membranes inside so upper membrane is called the vestibular membrane and lower membrane is called the basilar membrane okay so now if i ask you like you know uh, inside the cochlea you have two membranes so how many chambers three right one two three upper one middle one and lower one so two membranes separate the cochlea into three 
chambers or cavities okay now if i just take a cross section like chop it and just take this slice out so it will be like this it makes sense right so this is the cochlea and this is the upper membrane vestibular this is the basilar lower membrane and three cavities those three cavities are scala vestibule scala media scala tympani here okay all these are filled with what fluid The scala media, the fluid is called endolymph, this one. And in other two cavities, the fluid is called perilymph. Anyway, so those three are filled with fluid. Now, basilar membrane is here, and this is very important. Why? Because on the basilar membrane, you have a structure that is called spiral organ spiral organ also called organ of corti same thing some places you will see organ of corti some places spiral organ why this organ of corti is very important because the hair cells you remember i said inside the cochlea you have the hair cells where in the cochlea in the organ of corti so these are the hair cells and you have the hair on the hair cells that's why they are hair cells and they are sound receptor cells so very important right okay so uh, i can say that organ of corti rests on the basilar me uh, uh, membrane and inside the organ of corti you have the hair cells or sound receptor cells okay now on the top of the organ of corti you have another membrane like this this membrane is like a jelly like soft soft jelly like membrane this is called tectorial membrane okay so just know that that is the structure inside the cochlea two membranes three cavities on the basilar membrane you have the organ of corti or spiral organ and inside that you have the hair cells and on the top of that organ of corti another membrane soft jelly like that is the tectorial membrane okay now let's see this is the picture that i just did draw three cavities this is the middle scala media middle one and this is the organ of corti or spiral organ and these are the hair cells okay and this is the tectorial soft membrane okay now what happens uh, this is the basilar membrane and this is the organ of corti hair cells here attached to the apical end upper end of the hair cells right so these are hair nucleus so these are hair cells and hair and you know that soft jelly like membrane tectorial membrane is just resting on that so what happens these hair are inserted into the tectorial membrane soft tectorial membrane they are inserted into it okay now uh, when the fluid moves waves are created in the fluid you remember i said so that waves in the fluid will do what will push the basilar membrane up and down make sense so the waves that will be created in the fluid under the basilar membrane will move the basilar membrane and every time the basilar membrane will move up what will happen 
that will press the hair against the tectorial membrane and will bend the hair. Let me draw just one hair cell. Okay, so this is the hair cell nucleus here. Okay, tectorial membrane. So when you push up the hair will bend. When you will the membrane will move down, the hair will get straight. Make sense? So hair is bending and getting straight again and again, like you know, very high frequency. So when the hair bent, the ion channels will get opened here and sodium and you know uh, potassium uh, those positive ions will get in and will produce action potential depolarization that is the activation of the hair cell okay so every time the hair bend the cell produce cells produce action potential so the signal electrical signal will travel through the nerve the cochlear nerve so this is the cochlear nerve will take the signal at very high frequency depending on the frequency of the sound sound frequencies are very high so that is the mechanism it is a mechanical you know pressure that activate the hair cells so in case of olfaction and gustation uh, smell and taste you know that uh, the receptor cells are activated by the food molecules or smell molecules that chemical activation but in this case pressure up down and that is the mechanical activation of the hair cells okay so that is uh, how the hair cells these cells are activated and signal gets out through the cochlear nerve to the brain okay now just think that if these hair cells are destroyed, the cochlea or cochlear hair cells are destroyed, then the person will have hearing loss. Hearing loss because the hair cells are very important and no stem cell or basal cell is present here in case of olfactory and gustatory you had basal cells remember the stem cells but in cochlea you don't have so once the hair cells are destroyed or die no new hair cells are produced that's a problem right so the you need the implantation uh, otherwise the person will not be able to uh, um, hear so that is uh, the hearing loss called sensory neural hearing loss and this type of loss is like permanent loss because no stem cell is here in the organ of corti no new hair cells will be produced okay uh, so that is uh, called sensory neural hearing loss another type of hearing loss that is you know uh, very easy to fix like you know that is called conductive hearing loss this is your ear so like if uh, I put a piece of cotton here and block the sound waves from entering into the inner part of the ear, that is also will cause hearing loss. If you put ear plaque or you know put finger in the ear, uh, then the sound wave will not get in. That is also hearing loss, uh, but uh, you know that's not that serious. If infection occurs, that will block the sound waves. Uh, if a tumor is formed okay or you know the wax that sometimes uh, may block the air passes so all those can be fixed easily right so those are called conductive hearing loss so that is not that serious and you can easily fix it so conductive loss so those are two types of hearing loss and sensory neural hearing loss what can cause the death of the hair cells in the cochlea uh, commonly occurs due to uh, anti-cancer drugs you know uh, chemotherapy or uh, strong antibiotic if it is given in uh, children uh, like very strong 
penicillin that can also uh, cause the loss of hair. So anti-cancer drug and strong antibiotics are the main, you know, uh, reason. Another is prolonged exposure. Prolonged exposure to very high frequency noise. High frequency noise. So if someone works in a factory, uh, for long time, many hours every day, uh, he must put the you know um, mask, yeah, ear mask. Otherwise, that may lead to hair loss. That uh, can cause the loss of the function of the hair cells. Okay, uh, strong antibiotic in childhood, penicillin or antibiotic. Okay. and I said anti-cancer drug you know anti-cancer drugs are used to kill the cancer cells but that can also can uh, kill the hair cells so uh, I think uh, uh, that's all you need to know and then uh, the last thing you see the hair cells, hair of the hair cells you can see under the microscope. Uh, so this is the spiral organ, organ of corti, cochlear nerve. Uh, first the signal is taken to the medulla oblongata uh, where you have the cochlear nuclei. Okay, So the cochlear nerve takes the signal to the cochlear nuclei of the medulla oblongata. Okay? From there uh, goes to superior olivary nucleus in the medulla then goes to inferior colliculus then to the thalamus and then primary auditory cortex in the temporal lobe you already know this location uh, so that is the pathway again cochlear nerve cochlear nucleus in the medulla then superior olivary nucleus in the medulla then you know inferior colliculus in the midbrain then thalamus which is the major sensory relay station and auditory cortex okay so that is the pathway how the signal arrives into the brain okay so uh, those are the things uh, you need to know from uh, the olfactory gustatory and auditory systems uh, another interesting uh, you know uh, condition that is called uh, I don't know if you have any of you have heard about it. Uh, that is also commonly heard uh, clinical condition uh, that is actually very bothersome to the patients. Uh, that is called tinnitus. In common. Uh, uh, commonly known uh, ringing in the ear ringing in the ear tinnitus and uh, we don't know the exact reason for that but uh, you know the patient uh, often uh, hears sound although there is no source of sound uh, so uh, intrinsically the hair cells get activated these cells get activated without any sound waves and that will send signal to the brain brain has no way to know uh, from where the sound is coming because brain is sitting in a dark cavity it cannot see outside right so uh, brain only uh, uh, receives the signal how many times the signal is arriving here that's all brain counts okay digital counting processing so uh, whatever uh, activate the hair cells the brain receives the signal and will give you the perception of sound so if uh, you can put an electrode here and activate these receptors without any sound uh, that will also be perceived as sound so uh, we know that somehow these cells are getting activated so brain is getting the signal but what 
is causing that the exact mechanism is not known some people uh, some patients very often like you know every night or very frequently uh, get you know that sound some people the frequency in some people is uh, less like once in a month or a you know year that can also happen so uh, that is another interesting thing uh, about the sound perception okay